Hi guys, and welcome back to another TechMinds video. Now I've shown these types of mini HF transceivers before on the channel, but this one is a little different and that's down to its build quality and the fact it has an internal battery. But also its current price is around 60 UK pounds, which I think is fantastic for a little HF transceiver like this. Now the box kind of looks a little bit more commercialized than I've seen before but mine arrived pretty much damaged. Now the box itself is not really that important, but what's in the box is, and what you get here is a mains power supply, which provides 13.8 volt DC up to 1.5 amp. And this is for powering the radio if you're using it say at home. What's also interesting is that you get another mains adapter, but this time it's specifically used to charge the internal 4000 milliamp hour light iron battery. Now, I'm not sure why they could not just charge the battery while it's being powered from the 13.8 volt DC. Maybe it's cost effective to do it that way rather than putting a, another charging circuit into the radio. You also get a little manual. Well, I can't really call it a manual. It's more of a diagram that shows you what each of the buttons do. Although it does state on this pamphlet that the rated RF output power is between three to five watts. You also get a little speaker microphone, which has that usual Kenwood style plug on the end. Now, normally these are not the best quality mics, but it does mean that we should be able to use our own via that Kenwood style socket. And then of course we have the radio itself with its bright orange top. The grill area that you can see there, I originally thought was just for cooling, but there's actually a speaker underneath, which means if you do not have a speaker mic plugged in, that plays the received audio through there. The build quality on this radio, at least for the casing, is actually very well made. Now, it actually reminds me of an Apple Mac Mini, but with a plastic top. The front of the radio comprises of a menu button, an LCD, a headphone socket, a keystroke mic socket, a mode button, and then a multi-function rotary encoder. On the rear is where we find the Kenwood style speaker mic socket labeled as KJ. Now there's also a push switch for turning on and off the power to the radio. And then there are the power ports, one for direct powering and the other to charge the internal battery. Now notice how those ports are actually different sizes, which makes sure you do not plug the wrong power supply into the wrong charge port or the powering port, for example. The antenna connection is in the form of a BNC, which I guess is in line with the types of scenarios where you'd want to use this radio, I guess portable. If you want to use the included speaker mic, then it connects to that rear port like this, with the speaker mic cable just coming out to the rear right of the radio. Okay, so let's hook it up to an antenna and then turn it on. If you've seen these or used these USDX radios before, then the screen layout will look quite familiar. Now, apparently this radio supports eight HF bands, that's from 80 meters at 3.5 megahertz, right up to 29 megahertz. So as we now have the antenna connected, let's take a listen to see what we can hear over the ever so flat HF bands. We'll first test the inbuilt speaker, just to see what that sounds like. Um, could be quite a nice one actually in terms of value. Um, Now that's not bad at all, especially if you don't want to plug in a speaker mic. Okay, so let's now plug in the speaker mic and I'll place it in my camera microphone so you can hear it more clearly.
So that's receiving. And to be fair, that's actually not too bad. I like the way that when I was tuning, there was no whooshing noises like we hear on those SI4732 receivers. It actually feels quite nice to tune as well. The rotary encoder does feel smooth and you do get nice fine adjustments to make sure you tune it right in and spot on. OK, so that's receiving. Let's now take a listen to what it sounds like when transmitting. Now, I'll be using an SDR receiver that's quite close by to receive the transmitted audio. I think the audio sounds better now. This is uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Change the TX down to one. This is uh, M0 DCW. Uh, uh, not putting out that much power, but uh, you never know. It might be OK. Uh, this is with the TX drive set to two. The TX drive is sound net to two. And the TX drive is set to two. And we're peaking at around one watt to two watts, one to one and a half watts on uh, on the power meter. This is uh, Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. This is now with the TX drive set to four. The TX drive next to four. And uh, we're peaking around three watts, about three watts on the uh, RF power meter and transmitting on the USDX Plus. And I'd like to take a moment to thank JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Now, JLC PCB provide easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronic engineers to develop projects efficiently. Now, JLC PCB website is extremely easy to use, and ordering PCBs from JLC PCB is effortless. Just simply upload your Gerber file to get an instant quote and place your order in minutes. It's as easy as shopping online. Now you can get one to eight layer PCBs for just $2. And with efficient large scale production, this reduces cost and brings you unbeatable prices. Quality and lead time is highly reliable and all in-house production ensures quality stability, especially with their strict quality control in every process. You can have your PCBs produced in less than 24 hours if you need them in a rush. Easy to use, affordable to make, and reliable to trust. You can always count on JLC PCB. Now don't miss out JLC PCB's six layer PCB special. You can get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality six layer PCBs for just $5. Thanks again to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. Now the menu system, we'll take a quick look through and pressing the menu button once, we see that the volume control is 1.1. You can either press the menu button again and then turn the encoder to adjust it, or you can just press the encoder and turn it to change the volume. Menu item 1.2 is where you can change the mode of modulation. You can also perform this by using that mode button on the front panel if you do not want to enter into the menu to change modes. Here you can choose either lower sideband, upper sideband, CW, FM, and then AM. 1.3 is the receive filter bandwidth, which is either full, which I'm not entirely sure what it is. It's either 4K or 5K, most likely 4K. But the other options you've got is 3 kilohertz, 2.4 kilohertz, 1.8 kilohertz, 500 hertz, 200 hertz, 100 hertz, and 50 hertz. I think it sounds best at either 3 kilohertz or 2.4 kilohertz, in my opinion. Now, 1.4 is where you can change the band. 1.5 is the tune rate, but you can also adjust this when you're on the main screen just by tapping the encoder. And you'll notice that the step indicator moves across the frequency as you press it. 1.6 is to choose whether you're in VFO A or VFO B. 1.7 is RIT. 1.8 is AGC on or off. Now I left mine on all the time during this testing and I didn't need any reason to turn it off. 1.9 is noise reduction amount. 1.10 is attenuation amount, which is handy when receiving strong signals. And 1.11 is attenuation too. And 1.12 allows you to change the receiving strength indicator between dB and actual S points. 2.1 through all the twos actually relate to CW, including turning on the CW decoder. 3.1 enables Vox or 
voice activated for hands-free operation. Now 3.2 is noise gate, which in my opinion is best set to either zero or one, but you will need to set this to your needs. Now essentially it does what it says on the tin. It provides a noise gate for the microphone audio. 3.3 is TX driver, and while you may think this is an RF power output setting specifically, it is actually a form of mic gain, meaning if you turn this up too much, your transmitted audio will sound terrible. Now, I think the default was four, but bringing this down a little, say to two, made the audio sound a lot nicer, even though the transmitted output power did drop. 4.1 and 4.2 relate to the CQ calling using a preset call sign. Now 8.1 is the PA bias minimum value. Now the default here is zero, but I found around 20 is where it needs to be. Again, you will need to be careful when you adjust this yourself. Now 8.2 is the PA bias maximum where you do need to be even more careful because if you wind this all the way up, then there's a good chance you could damage the output transistors. Now I set mine anywhere between 120 and 126, just to be safe. 8.3 is the reference frequency. Now be careful here, you can use this to finely adjust the radio's main tuning, especially if you find that the radio is off frequency. 8.4 is IQ phase. Now actually, I have no idea what that is on this particular radio, so I'll just leave it at 90. And lastly, 10.1 is where you can turn on or off the LCD backlight. I guess you may want to turn it off to save power when running from the internal battery. Now I will not bore you with going through each band and measuring the output power because they were literally all the same. Now I noticed a peak of around 3 watts when using an external DC supply and then around 1.5 watts to 2 watts when using the internal battery. Now remember that this was with the TX drive set a bit lower than default just so that the transmitted audio quality sounded a bit better. Now, if you're interested in seeing what it looks like inside, this is what it looks like. You can see that big blue battery there, and it's actually glued in place. And although I did want to show what the PCB looked like in full, I'm not actually going to remove the battery because it's kind of glued in fairly well. And obviously I don't want to damage the battery and I don't have any of this white stuff glue to glue it back in again. So I'll just leave it like this and hopefully you can see down this end the quality of the build. Now when you do change bands you can hear relays clicking which means it's actually switching in and out filters. So this radio does have filtering when it comes to the different HF bands. So there we go that's another USDX Plus version 2 HF transceiver. And in my opinion, these are actually getting better quality as time goes on. I think this is probably the first one where I felt confident that the receive was working really nicely. Yesterday I was testing it, the band conditions weren't great, but I was still able to get some good receiving samples. And today it was even better. The bands were a little bit more alive and it was actually nice to be able to tune around and actually find someone to listen to. And to be honest, I actually quite like it. For 60 UK pounds, even if you was just to use this as a receiver, it's way better than a lot of other receivers that I've featured on the channel before. So I was quite pleasantly surprised at how well this worked. Anyway, you guys take care of yourself. And of course, I'll leave a link down below if you want to check it out or order one yourself. Till the next one, take care. See you in the next video.